It's another miserable day outside and so the first half of this video is in the kitchen. Tomorrow the sun is shining and I'm hoping that I can get out possibly with the lovely Julia, maybe with the lovely Joe. So the second half of this video may be that. Who knows at this stage? Just a miserable day out there at the moment. So I thought today my best policy is to try and do some stuff in the kitchen that I've been meaning to do. One of those tasks is to tidy up this shelf behind me, which is a complete and utter mess. Whilst I'm doing that, I've just lit the Essie, as you saw, and I put the kettle on. It'll take a while for that to warm up and get the kettle warm enough to have tea, but that means all that time um, we'll be working on this. And when that happens, that's my tea break. You see, um, it's not really cold, but it's just, I want to make some soup as well for tomorrow. So I might make enough for today and enough for tomorrow so that Julia and I, if we go out, we can have some soup with us. So I've lit the SE early and also I've got a whole load of bits of palette that I acquired. Um, thanks to Merlin actually, who knew a bloke who was getting rid of some old bits and I'm trying to burn them up as well and make space for my new logs, which will be coming in soon. But the task today is to sort of try and tidy up this awful shelf. The trouble with shelves, and I'm sure everybody else has the same issue, is that you just get stuff on there, you just accumulate, you dump stuff on there, and then in the end you don't know um, what you've got. I've noticed that I've got loads of half-opened spaghetti, for example, that really should be put into one jar or something. I used to have a jar that I used to put the spaghetti in, don't know where it is, I might find it. I'm going to do one shelf at a time. I don't know why I've chosen this particular shelf, I guess because it's uh, chest height. Give it a clean because using an SE and with the smoke that comes out when you open the door and the dust that comes in the kitchen, it's just uh, always messy. Clean that up and then sort out what I don't need because I've got a lot of tins and now that I'm on my new health diet and these are processed foods, I'm going to use these up but only in emergency. So I will eat them because it's silly not to, but I will only use them up when I'm stuck or I'll keep some in the van for those moments when I need something to eat. And it, it, you know, processed food is okay in very tiny amounts in my book and as an emergency or a backup, mostly I'm aiming to eat real food. That's the plan for 2022. I know, you'll hold me to it. Whew. Well, I've done it. Actually, it took a bit of time that uh, cleaning with a, a wire, not a wire brush, but one of those wire pads that you use on um, for washing up. Hang on, I've got one here. He leans across one of these, um, you know, brushing and brushing. Probably could do with another paint job, to be honest with you, uh, the whole thing. But um, at least it's clean. It's been wiped down and somewhat reorganized. So. That is a job oh, I've been meaning to do for so long. Um, I can access things. Um, I turned the table round here a little bit. I might just try living with the table in this direction as it is, um, because I can sit at the table looking, well, looking up the corridor, but it gives me more access in here. So that might be quite good as well. But I'm now going to break my fast this morning. It's coming up to half past 11. So what I'm going to do is I think I'm, I'm going to have some porridge. Now I'm keeping off wheat. I am having oats. 
Um, I know grains, a lot of people say keep off all of the grains, but I'm having a small amount of porridge and not every day, perhaps two to three times a week, small amount with some fruit. And then I might follow that up a little bit later with some egg and bacon, uh, which would be lovely. And then until my last meal, which will be about six o'clock. So although I'm trying to aim for three meals, um, sort of this is a little, what would you call it? It's a breakfast and then a egg and bacon type of thing. So it's really one meal. That's how I'm counting it. Here we go. I've got some porridge on the go and I'm using some raw milk with my porridge here, which I got from Charlie's farm shop. So that would be nice. Just a little bit of porridge. Um, I'm going to put my blueberries in the microwave, ping them up and then add them uh, to the bowl and then just sit and munch that. It's going to be lovely. And of course, because I'd finished all the work, I've got my tea, which has been just very lovely, um, ready. Not, sorry, not coherently making sense, but it's all there. So I can have breakfast as it were, late breakfast, I suppose, for most people. Right, that seems to be done. And I have uh, zizzed up the, <laughs> the blueberries. And so I'm just going to add all this into the same pot here. Oh, I can tell you when you get to, what is it now? Just uh, coming up to quarter to 12 and you get to that point where you think, do you know what? I am hungry and I do need uh, not only a nice cup of tea, which I have here, Hmm, which is lovely. And of course I can, uh, with my magic pot, I can pour out uh, more and more, but I can enjoy these lovely blueberries and porridge. Look at that. I don't know if you can see that, but that is, that is wonderful. So I'm going to have something to eat now and then um, we'll worry about the other bits afterwards. Oh yeah. I've got to make some soup, haven't I? Cheers. Mmm. Lovely. I'm in the dark, but not for long, for I have a thing. I want to show you. Some while ago, I was approached by a company. Um, I'll put the details on the screen. Um, and this company said we do these wonderful LED strip lights, portable strip lights, as you can see, look at this. So I'm in, a, I'm in my utility room in which I store my, uh, my lights, my tripods, other bits and bobs of equipment, um, all sorts of rubbish in here. Uh, really, it's just a dumping ground for stuff. But, and I come in here and I do my stretches and exercises occasionally as well. Anyway, they show me, they said, would you be interested in um, these lights, uh, showing them on your YouTube channel, they might be useful in your van life and all the other stuff that you do. And I said, yeah, do I get to keep it afterwards? It's not a paid promotion as such. Um, I'm happy to give it a, a whirl and see what it's like. And so it comes on a reel. I actually don't know how long it is. Several meters. I'm going to measure all of this and I will not do a uh, uh, you know, a video exclusive to it, but I want to show it in a camping environment when I go camping, camping in an early evening. So I don't know when that will be, but I just wanted to show you really the fact that it's, it's really good. I did at first think this is something I could have fitted into the van as a permanent feature and I will try it out in the van and we'll see how we go. Um, but it's great the fact that it's a portable thing and you'll see me use it again, I'm sure, because they've said I can keep it. And it just rolls up like this. It's on a, and, and it's actually quite bright, you know, and you get it into a, into, well, you can see. And I'm running off a 12 volt supply. Um, I've got a little um, power oak, uh, which gives me 12 volts. Um, it gives me DC, you just charge it up, but you can plug this into your cigarette lighter 12 volt supply and great portable thing. I gather that it's permanent, it's uh, waterproof as well. So 
I think it's going to be really useful for either in the van when it's dark or if I get an awning in the van and that sort of thing. I think it's going to be quite handy, but I'll show you more about that in the future. But I just found it. Um, it came about a week ago. I thought I must show you because it's really good. So a link will be in the description if you're interested and uh, a link to the website. So there we go. How about that? So we're out on the South Downs, somewhere that we went to oh, a couple of autumns ago now, um, up at Mile Oak Farm, which is just uh, in front of us and over to the South Downs, just, I suppose, a little um, west of Brighton and east of Worthing. And it's very nice to have another nice day. They seem to be at this time of year so rare, these sunny days, the old crisp days. And it's actually quite mild now. It was um, a little bit uh, cold this morning and I was wearing my lovely bobble hat, but I actually, I find in the sun, the rays are beautifully warm. We've had to take our hats off, haven't we? Are you getting warm as well? It is nice and warm, isn't it? That sun is beating down beautifully. Oi, no throwing stones. We haven't seen Joe for a while, have we? No. How old is he now? He's two, he's almost two and a half. Two and a half. And uh, so he's in the terrible twos. Is he much of a handful? Oh yes, he's, he's very much of a handful. But now that he's walking and he's able to sort of uh, not be quite so clingy, it must be so much better for you. Yes, he's capable of walking much further. And more importantly, he's interested in it. Right. So that's um, really good. So relatively new thing this week of being able to walk and wanting to walk further than I was expecting him to. Yeah, well you hadn't had a lot of great weather to get out, that's the thing, you know, and mm. for a kid being cramped up now that we're coming out of the pandemic that must also be a good thing because it's Absolutely. given you opportunities to take him further places. Yes, I mean there's only so many parks around the area, you know, that you can go spend 10 minutes out to relieve the, uh, yeah. the boredom of four square walls. Oh. However many there However are. Many there. Exactly. <laughs> Go on. We're trying to train Joe in the magic art of walking past the camera. <laughs> yeah. So when we're filming, we can make it look like you know, a little outing, and everybody, the camera doesn't exist, and he's slowly getting it. Yeah, yeah, he's slowly. <laughs> it's getting, it's getting there. Action! Good boy. There we go, making out nothing's happening, it's very nonchalant. Point at something, point at that, oh yes, keep walking. There's a rather lovely dew pond here, I didn't know there was a dew pond here. Um, as you just so rightly said, dew pond, not, not a swimming, swimming pond. <laughs> Should you turn around? Turn around. Hey Joe. Say How hi. are you doing? Cheese. Say hi. Cheese. Cheese. <laughs> yeah. He is growing up to be a film star and slowly learning all the techniques. Jeez! <laughs> but uh, often, when filming Joe, we get the back of his head or he just moves out of shot. Or sometimes he wiggles, don't you? You wiggle a bit, don't you, Joe? Are you a wiggler? A wriggler? Yes, I am. You are. <laughs> I think you should throw him in the dew pond. Ready? That'll give him his juice. No, no, I was, I was actually only joking. Oh my God. I think it must be very, very good to get the kids out like this, into the fresh air, up on the downs, away from people, just to experience nature. Mm. I imagine Joe really benefits from that, doesn't he? Yeah, he, he does. I mean, he's a, he's an active kid. <laughs> so, um, 
I mean, he loves stones, he loves sticks and all of that. So this is a and great he, opportunity for him to go pick them up yes. and play with them. And throw them. And throw them. Difficult to train him I or to teach him, you know, to not to throw them at people and things because he's, he's still just discovering joy and pleasure in, in manipulating things. That's right. He's, he's just starting to come to the age where you can start to reason with him, aren't you? I, I mean, I found it absolutely fascinating watching how... I mean, it's been so long since I had kids, so watching Joe has been fascinating how he's been developing. And, and I forgot how much the kids listen, although they can't use the language. They understand the language much earlier than, than they can speak it, of course. And so you can tell them things and he can understand, but he just can't articulate back. He's slowly getting there. But no, but I, that's not yeah, a bad thing. Yeah, I'm yeah. just saying it's, you know, that's the development, isn't it? And of course, different kids will develop at different times. That's right. I mean, it, 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 there are probably quite a few kids that at this age would be, you know, saying many different words, um, whereas he uses a few different words to mean several different things. Yes. But there's a lot of kids, those kids probably can't climb so well as he can. Yeah, his confidence or, or levels are really high. like he can or whatever. And he's developed his own communication system. If he wants you to do something, he grabs your oh, hand yeah. and drags you to you, whatever it is that he wants you to do. You know what it is he wants, usually. Yeah. You're quite clear, aren't you? Oh, did you hurt your finger? And of course, you as a mother are learning that non-verbal communication all the time. So just like that, you know, yeah. he holds his hand out, you know immediately what the situation yeah, I mean, is. There are some things that are universal, but there, you know, quite a lot of it is uh, unique to each child. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, uh, my eldest, Elijah, he, he was a late talker as well. But then again, so was I. I didn't really speak sentences until I was five. No. But I didn't, I guess I didn't feel the need to until that point. I, I knew how to, to suddenly, yes, please, I'd like that glass of water. Oh, right. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> my parents. I was born with a microphone in my hand and a little vlogging camera, I think. <laughs> Oop, that nearly fell over. <laughs> and you weren't even pulled over yeah, by a Joseph. <laughs> Well, we're heading back to the van to get some soup that I've cooked, some cabbage and brown onion soup with a few extra veg in it, but we won't subject you to that in this video. No doubt we'll be out about again um, on another one, taking the coats off because we're so warm. Yep, yep. We're all but, wearing Mary Hammond jumpers as well. <laughs> yes, we've got that very special br uh, br uh, brand, the Mary Hammond jumper, specially knitted for us, which is mm. very kind. So, um, I can't actually see the screen on no, the camera. The sun is so bright and unexpected, really. But anyway, thank you for watching. Um, we'll be back again out and about doing our thing, no doubt, very soon, especially if the weather comes in. Joe, you got any last minute thoughts? Joe, do you want to say bye bye? Bye bye. You blow kisses? <laughs> Good boy. There we go. Mm -hmm. Isn't that the cutest? Till next time, from Julia, Joe, and I. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye.